Hello Jigsaw fans, and welcome to the Jigsaw Workshop. This is the old Frank. Uh, this is the old Regibor. Frank here is just a little tube of plastic uh, with a bamboo skewer gaff taped to it. Pull this little tab to make his mouth move. That's really hard to operate. Frank and Regibor were invented for a one-shot joke. And then they sort of kept coming back. We wanted them to be easy to operate, which is why this happened. Uh, this is the new Frank. He is all one piece, stable. It's thick, so you can actually hold on to it. You can put any number of fingers through this little loop, and by pulling it, control the mechanism. Uh, you have a Frank that can be operated with one hand, which is important because if you've watched the videos, you know that it seems that I am operating at least three puppets at a time, which is hard when you only have two arms. So this episode is really for those out there who are interested in puppetry and making puppets, and Danny, I'm looking at you, I'm looking at you, I'm looking out of your computer and from the internet, so I, that's actually creepy, I'm gonna stop doing it. So what we need is we need a office store paper tube, plastic spool, I took all the thread off of that, by hand, it was really annoying. Got a green rubber band, we've got a disposable paintbrush, some Elmer's glue, some twine, an old chopstick, tissue paper, a metal plate that was picked up at the dollar store, a drill, Super Sculpey, actually this is regular Sculpey, the regular Sculpey was on sale, Super Sculpey is much better, if you can find it, it's really, really good, but it's also much more expensive, so sometimes you have to go for the thing that is more um, cheap. Two very important tools. One is a bent paper clip. More on that later. The other, a very sharp X-Acto knife. Which brings us to knife safety. Meet me over there. Okay. X-Acto knives. And as you can see, the blade is yeah, a little over three quarters of an inch long. That doesn't seem like very long. But, see that, that, that little hole there? That hole that matches up with that big purple ugly thing on my leg? Yeah, three quarters of an inch feels really long when it's embedded in your leg. When you're using an X-Acto knife, use it over a table and keep the sharp parts away from anything that bleeds. Because the emergency room people will laugh at you. They'll, they'll fix you and then they'll laugh at you. Keep this away from this. Grab a pencil. I have drilled a hole in the mouth area as well as where the string will come out eventually. This is the time when we are very, very careful. Now that we have a rough guideline, let's move to the Sculpey. We take little bits of Sculpey off. We're going to put them directly onto the tube, like so. This isn't going to be a very interesting process to watch. I'm going to be translating this two-dimensional figure into a three-dimensional figure in clay, and it's going to be a very long process and not really one that you'll get a whole lot out of. Which isn't to say that the uh, process of turning two dimensions into three dimensions isn't a fascinating one, theoretically. I mean, look at this. Look at Regibor's nose. Um, that's pretty much the right shape, you know, when you're looking straight on, but what's that dimension supposed to look like? Is it going to be flat? Is it going to be, like, really round? Is it going to be pointy? Is it going to be straight? Is it going to come well? I just don't know. And that's the sort of thing that you have to figure out when you're doing the sculpture part of this thing. It's sort of up here and not here. Regibor now has a nose and a top lip. Uh, uh. There are two different main types of sculpture, additive and subtractive. Additive is where you take a material and you build things up. Subtractive is where you take a material and you cut things away from it. So if you look at the original Frank and the original Regibor, you'll notice that Frank is primarily made up of straight lines, while Regibor is made up of mostly curves. Frank, much easier to put a bunch of clay on cut away in order to preserve these little angles. Whereas Regibor, 
much easier to start from nothing, add a bunch of clay and little round balls, and start sculpting, add a little bit to the nose to make it rounder, add a little bit to the cheeks, and then, oh my god, he's got a chin! Eyes are very important. When you're designing a puppet from scratch, it's very important to decide where you want the eyes. For example, the eyes up here, it's a very different look than the eyes down here, which is a very different look from the eyes tilted this way, different look from eyes tilted this way. Just the tiny little movements of eye placement are what are going to determine how people read your puppet. It, the, the eyes being the thing that most people are going to focus on. So eye placement is very, very, very important. Now, when you're trying to redo a puppet that you've already done, eye placement is even more important because people have been looking at those eyes for a while and they're used to the way that they're spaced. And you kind of have to get this exactly right. Somewhere around there, but that's too low. And maybe have a little bit more. But no, they're, they're angled at the wrong, and it looks kind of sad. And in three dimensions, it's going to look sadder, or happier, or more angry than it was in two dimensions. So, I'm going to spend like another hour just on the eyes. Old Regibor? New Regibor! As we can see from the old Frank and the new Frank, they have the same basic arm shape. This is construction paper. It's very flimsy, which is why it's taped up all over the place. This is actually made out of metal. Frank and Legibor have different arm shapes, which means that the template that I have from Frank isn't the template I need. But it does give us an idea. So what I've done is I've traced it, and then I've used that as a size comparison to make a new template. This is the new template for the arm, which I put there and there. We looked at this and came up with this for the hand template, which is now traced on there. And then I'm going to cut this out with some powerful scissors. This is not the thinnest stuff in the world, and it is metal, so if you're doing this at home, be careful. It's not exactly exacto knife sharp, but you might be able to draw blood with it if you really tried. 